Hello, good morning, everyone. I am Vinisha. I am currently a third year undergraduate student in Indian Institute of Technology, Varanasi, in India. So this summer, I worked under Dasharma lab on the project topic doing bioinformatic analysis on protein adaptation of hyaluronic organisms towards cold temperature. So in today, I will be presenting about the works published by the Dasharma lab on this particular uh, polyextremophilic hyaluronic organisms, hyaluronic lacus profundi, and this particular notable protein called beta galactosidase. These observations of amino acid substitutions have helped us move one step further towards finding life on Mars. So, being present and living on Earth and fulfilling a life on Earth is not enough, right? The, we as a humans are always trying to look beyond the Earth and to find what is beyond Earth and our solar system and everything. And there has been a lot of events and a lot of uh, programs that has been launched to do such things. For example, uh, we have these James Webb telescope images, which has showed us wonderful um, things on how, how much more we are about to see. And this will help us in the future on uh, exploring more about on life, right? And astrobiology is an important part of this. Astrobiologists from different fields come together to work on complex problems where no each uh, single field can do it alone, uh, including biology, astronomy, physics, oceanography, everything you can combine. That is why this is like a, a fascinating topic to explore on. So why particularly halophilic uh, RK organism that's my lab focused on? So Earth is uh, comprised mostly of water and some of them are influenced by cold temperatures like in Antarctic or Arctic regions. And mostly these perennially cold environments are also accompanied by uh, hypersaline environments, which is even salty than regular salt water. These extreme conditions are seems to be also the condition of Mars. So they thought, why not we can try to find life in these extreme conditions in Earth and try to grow it in Mars, right? So that's why uh, this particular halophilic orga organism was chosen. Extremophilic microbes, extremo means like extreme temperature adapting microbes are abundant in such environments and these help us uh, have a different point of view and interest view in these organisms. So particularly, um, this Halorubum lacus profundi is one of the few cold adapted and salt adapted species that is available in pure culture. This has been extracted from Antarctica with temperatures colder than 0 degrees Celsius and with salinity of 3.5 molar NaCl. And in this uh, Halorubum lacus profundi, there is this particular gene cluster which came to the interest. There is a gene cluster of carbohydrate utilization. This um, beta galactosidase is the family of this uh, gene cluster called BGA gene. So this gene has uh, showed its optimal condition, optimal working condition in salinity of 2 to 5 molar NaCl and at temperatures and it retained its activity at even 0 degree Celsius, which makes it an ideal model enzyme for low temperature and extreme con temperature condition studies. So why particularly the family of galactosidase is chosen? So the galactosidase is uh, particularly classified into seven glycosyl hydrolysis. And this glycosyl hydrolysis is something which catalyzes the hydrolysis of um, glycosidic bonds in complex sugars. So beta galactosidase is also one of them. So this beta galactosidase is a part of the uh, glycosyl hydrolase 42 family. So in hydro, uh, hyaluronic lacus profundi, there is a gene cluster that is present on chromosome 2, which you can see in figure, which comprises of uh, sugar binding proteins, uh, ABC sugar transporter proteins, beta galactosidase, alpha galactosidase, and kinase. These all are as being a, a part of biotechnical importance for uh, have, uh, doing observations under um, extreme water conditions. And this beta galactosidase of lacus profundi has proved to um, trace uh, and you know, um, catalyze even the trace level amounts of carbohydrate in, in the Antarctic regions through the pathway of the late Dudrov pathway. This pathway is like a series of cycles converting glucose to pyruvate through a lot of enzymes. Though, so this particular enzyme used this pathway to do that. So this polyextremophilic character shown by the beta galactosidase is a prime reason why we are trying to use that for uh, studies at high salt concentrations and low temperatures 
concentrations. So what it does, uh, so we need to show, right, why by beta galactosidase of lacus profundi is more cold adapted than its mesophilic halophilic proteins, right. So for that, what they did is they did a site directed metagenesis. So they took uh, lacus profundi, a beta galactosidase, and also its uh, respective uh, halo, uh, mesophilic haloarchaeans. They, um, what they did is they overexpressed this in um, genetically tractable haloarchaean, which doesn't contain beta galactosidase. That organism is NRC1, and it has been under the control of a cold shock protein from gene promoter named CSPD2. This, these two are particularly chosen because to avoid the overexpression of the host as well as to promote the cold active proteins. So basically what they did is a histamine tag was added to the BGA gene and it was um, um, uh, this following plasmid PRK42 has been uh, constructed. In, and then the mutated as well as the wild type BGA genes were made into expression host and the enzyme was uh, made to produce. So from these observations, um, they also um, directed the NRC1 in very cold and salt conditions. So from, the, uh, from those conditions, what the observation was happened is that the beta galactosidase protein has been uh, formed 20 folds more higher than its available host. So these results prove that uh, even a slight change in the amino acid residues is responsible for and a key important factor to observe the cold temperature um, studies. So uh, um, from these observations, thick amino acid residues were potentially uh, declared as an important part for the cold activity in halorubum lactose profundi beta galactosidase, which is not uh, seen in the mesophilic haloarchaeans. So in addition to uh, pro uh, proving its, so they uh, shown a consensus of the amino acid substitutions and the mutations happened in the halorubum lactose profundi. And what they did is they took 13, uh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, excuse me, oh, Graham, sir. Yeah, was that shared by you or is that somebody else trying to Zoom bomb us here? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Too. I don't see any other users here who aren't part of the MSIS. Okay, should I continue? Yeah, please continue. Okay, so 13 completely... Um, sequenced genomes of the halorchal uh, organisms were taken for the comparison and they observed the number of amino acid substitutions that happened. Firstly, with uh, haloribum lacus profundi alone. And after that, they compared it with particularly beta galactosidase protein. So what they observed is around 8 to 9 percentage substitutions uh, were found varied, varied in the uh, haloribum lacus profundi than its respective mesophilic proteins. And almost 50% of these uh, different varied amino substitutions are between highly similar amino acids. And from all these, what they observed as a result is that uh, it led to increase in hydrophobic, it led to increase in hydrophobicity and decreased uh, negative charges in this protein surface. And in, in internal residues too, there was a little difference in molecular residues and the hydrophobicity. And there was also one flexibility in the conformation and the protein structure at low temperatures. So this proves that even a slight change and even though it has um, more than 50% of uh, highly similar amino acid substitutions, those substitution are the reason why this halorubum lactose profundi beta galactosidase protein is more adapted towards cold temperature than its respective halophilic organisms. So, um, so from all these observations, uh, we were able to move one step and more closer to find um, to see there is there can be a life that can be formed in Mars. So, um, not only limited to beta galactosidase, there is a lot of proteins we can check out related to beta galactosidase. Like we can work on alpha galactosidase to find more cold adapted proteins and this will help us uh, write it, move towards the future I guess, to infinity and beyond yeah thank you everyone and thanks for giving me this opportunity to present this i am very much thankful for 
um, Dasharma sir for letting me work this summer and Graham sir for doing this organization. Uh, thankful. I'm thankful to everyone. Thank you, everyone. Awesome. Great job, Venetia. Thank you so much. Um, so for our audience, if there's anyone new who wasn't joining in before, um, you can certainly unmute yourself during the Q&A to ask questions. You can raise your hand. I will call on you. Um, you can also ask questions in the chat for Venetia. And I do apologize for whatever happened. I'm, not, I'm actually not sure why that emoji popped up. Um, Sandra, yeah. I see that you have a question. Yeah, thank you, Venetia, for your presentation. Uh, I was curious where Halarkia like Fondi, gets its energy from. In other words, what's its metabolism? Um, so particularly that beta galactosidase um, is um, working through its mechanism through the d do pathway. So that was one of the prime reason that Lacus profundi is more adapted towards cold temperatures. But what is it used to, to do for food? What's the electron donor and, elect and acceptor? I'm just curious. Okay, I'm I'm not uh, uh, sure of too much details on that. Okay, that's fine. I'm curious. sorry. No, that's fine. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.